Ho, 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 man. No, 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 no. Get out of here, you fat bitch. We ain't doing that. It ain't Christmas time. It's turkey time. Oh, all right, buddy. It's all you. Hello, and welcome back to A Squirrel Plays. Today's video is going to be about the Femme Fatale, and if you're wondering why, well, let me tell you how I got there. My original plan was to talk about character backstories, but while working on the script, I realized I was talking more about character tropes. So I decided to shift gears a little bit, got on the interwebs, and started doing a little reading, looking for some tropes to discuss, and then I came across a very interesting article. The article, as you might imagine, was about character tropes. It started off well enough talking about the importance and usefulness of tropes, comparing the difference between that and character archetypes. It even had this bit that I really, really liked. While cliches are generally accepted to be bad by definition because they feel old and overused, tropes are neither good nor bad in themselves. They are tools which can be used skillfully or poorly. And I think that's a really, really good line. Note that it doesn't say cliches are in fact bad. It just says that they are generally accepted to be bad by definition. If you play your cards right, you can make cliches and tropes work out in your favor. In other words, I had hope for this article. You all know how I feel about blanket rules when it comes to storytelling when people start saying things like always do this or never do that. Unfortunately, as you scroll down through the article, you'll see this bit of text. Some tropes should definitely be either subverted or avoided entirely, as they have either become so overused as to stray into cliché territory or reinforce unhelpful stereotypes about gender, race, or ability. And it is at about this point you can just see and feel the Starbucks oozing out between the words, as directly beneath that in big bold letters is the heading Avoid These Character Tropes. Now, originally, I was going to talk about all of these, but I got so hung up on the first one that I decided to just make an entire video on that alone. And if you didn't put it together yet, yes, the first thing in this person's list of character tropes to avoid is the femme fatale, which is absolutely bonkers to me. I mean, who doesn't like a good femme fatale? Everybody likes women, and even women like women. Just look at these stats. Y'all bunch of dirty little goblins. But jokes aside, while I'm certainly not an authority on any of this, and you're free to write your stories however you want, I am still allowed to have an opinion, and I believe that the femme fatale is a fantastic tool for storytelling and makes for a really cool character. And why do I think that? Because just a single one of them can cause a tremendous amount of damage. Just one can destroy the tightest of bonds between two people or even an entire group. Just one of them can bring down an entire team without lifting a single finger. I'm getting a little ahead of myself though. First, let's make sure we're on the same page. What is a femme fatale? According to the interwebs, a femme fatale can be described the following ways. Webster defines it as an attractive and seductive woman, especially one who is likely to cause distress or disaster to a man who becomes involved with her. Wikipedia says a femme fatale, sometimes called a man-eater or a vamp, is a stock character of a mysterious, beautiful, and seductive woman whose charms ensnare her lovers, often leading them into compromising deadly traps. And the Encyclopedia Britannica explains it as such. Femme fatale, which is French for fatal woman, is a seductive and beautiful woman who brings disaster to anyone with whom she becomes romantically involved. So, in case you haven't figured it out yet, a femme fatale is bad news. But what's sad is that some folks seem to have a pretty negative outlook on this character trope. If you go down the encyclopedia entry just a little bit, it even says, The femme fatale has been dismissed as a sexist figure of male fantasy, which is just so darn silly to me. I know there's been a big push from Hollywood over the recent years to have that big, strong female character, and needless to say, it has caused a bit of controversy, which to be honest is probably the goal, at least for Disney. But as you can see, even other folks, such as the writer of this article, are doing the same thing. Which seems odd to me because it craps on already existing good characters and stories. Let's take a trip down memory lane and look at some of the fine femme fatales of the past to see just how dangerous and potent they can be. Let's go way back, all the way to about 1400 BC. Maybe. I don't actually know. 
but I'm talking about Samson and Delilah. You know, the story about the big strong man who got his strength from his hair and the woman got him to confess his secrets and she cut it. It's an old example, but hey, you should took down the strongest man around, right? What about some more modern examples? There's Xenia from GoldenEye. Not only did she give James Bond a pretty good beatdown, it also took two people to kill her. Wait for your turn. Sounds like a strong female character to me without having it smeared all over your face. A slightly more well-known one would probably be Black Widow. Remember that time she tricked Loki? So, Banner, that's your play. That was pretty smooth. Or how about that lady from The Incredibles? No kicks! No, no, not that one. This one. Mirage. She got Mr. Incredible into all kinds of trouble. Or how about Faye Valentine? Lust. Morrigan. Or the classic Lady Macbeth. Eh? Eh? Forgot all about that one, didn't you? That's okay, I did too. The idea that femme fatales aren't strong female characters is just crazy to me. If anything, I feel like they're some of the strongest. Looking back at Marvel for a second, just compare Black Widow to Captain Flatback, Captain Pain in the ass, Captain Resting Bitch, Captain Marvel. Yeah, sure, Captain Marvel can blow a hole through an entire planet probably and travel faster than the speed of light and even has this unique, amazing ability to force a broken plot to continue, but does that make her strong? Black Widow, a mere mortal, tricked a god at his own game with just her wits. Which one is more impressive? Which one actually makes a stronger character? But that was way back when Marvel wasn't completely terrible. Now they just have her doing this. No Black Widow can attack him because if they smell him, they are mind controlled into not hurting him. Like, they can kill him at a distance, but if they get close, they will smell him and then they can't kill him. His pungent aura protects him from Black Widows. Uh, once upon a time. Anyway, you know what would make an already good femme fatale completely overpowered? A shapeshifter like Mystique from X-Men. If an intelligent femme fatale had that ability, they would be almost unstoppable. That said, the shapeshifting approach is really, really cool. But man, you would have to put some limits on that. Something like only letting them have a couple different forms, because that could get way, 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 way out of control. But you know what else makes a femme fatale great? It's not just that it's a single individual that could bring down mountains of opposition through seduction and trickery, it's because it's believable. Now look, if my YouTube analytics are anywhere near right, most of you watching this are male. And let's be honest guys, let's be real. When it comes to women, we're pretty stupid. Think about it, how many dumb decisions have you made in your life because of some woman? Lord knows I've made more than a few, and I'm probably not done yet either. I'm telling you, man, women are a force to be reckoned with. If I could get one message out to the world before I die, it wouldn't be love your neighbor or treat everyone with kindness and respect or anything good like that. Mm -mm, no, sir, it'd be that women are dangerous. We know Superman isn't the most realistic thing in the world. We don't know what it's like to fly or move faster than a speeding bullet or be strong enough to lift an entire train. But when we see this godlike character get tricked by a woman, it does two things. One, it makes the woman seem incredibly powerful. And two, it makes the hero, Superman in this case, just a little bit more believable and relatable. It makes him a bit more human, something that we can understand. And the femme fatale didn't even have to do anything unrealistic. She just used the most basic tools at her disposal. It's brilliant. Now, let's talk a little bit about TTRPGs. How do you slide such a wonderful character type into your game? Well, as the GM, you gotta lean into that role hard, man. Seduce your players. Really make them feel uncomfortable. And in case it wasn't obvious, I am joking. Please don't do that. But you can have a femme fatale in your game without having to worry about the flirting bit and making everything awkward. You can describe the queen as devilishly good looking, but the important part to get across will be how she treats the king and how he acts around her. Does she seem to sway his decisions? Does she make him change his mind frequently? Does she interrupt him or does she constantly shower him with praise and reinforce everything he does? That's how you can show your players what they're up against and hint that there's more at play. Your femme fatale could also be posing as the cliche damsel in distress, but is actually leading your players into a trap. Maybe she's really a nasty wench and wants to make a stew out of level one adventurers. It's gotta be level one though. The meat starts getting a little too tough about level three. 
But really, that's about all I got. It was mostly just me venting and not really making a point. The idea of telling somebody to never use the femme fatale trope is really silly to me, and I wanted to foam at the mouth about it for a few minutes. Anyway, shout out time. Today's shout out goes to not one individual, but a group. And that would be Avenue Studios. They're part of the group that I meet up with for a chat once a month over at the end of Planar Crossroads. And man, they're making some high quality stuff over there. My goofy ass over here with a stock image of a squirrel and a black screen. But on top of professional level production, one of them even went to being a full-time GM. And if I can keep my name straight, I think it was this guy, Jacob. Full-time GM. Professional GM. He gets paid to do it. Can you believe that? And this guy over here is Dan. I think he's the technical know-how behind the operation. Maybe. I'm just kind of assuming. And this guy over here has a mustache. I mean, just look at that thing. That's insane. So on that note, Mr. Professional GM, how many femme fatales have you put in your games? And that goes for all of you, really. How many femme fatales have you used as a GM? How many have you run into during your games as a player? And most importantly, who is your favorite femme fatale? Either video game, movie book, TTRPG, whatever. Who was your favorite? My favorite was... I.